Sarah with Sarah Goes Everywhere, and today we have Susan Huang. Very nice. <laughs> you pronounced my name correctly. That's like porn to me. Good. Everyone says Wang. It's spelled W-H-A-N-G, so people say Wang. And it's Korean, and it's a soft A sound. My father tells people it's like Don Juan. J-U-A-N is pronounced Juan, not Wan. Wan. Right? It's yeah. not Don Wan. So it's Suzanne Huang. Thank you Hi. for that. It was my pleasure. That was beautiful. <laughs> I thought we got it right. You did. I won't get it right again. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, um, I am best known for hosting House Hunters on HGTV for almost 10 years. That's my main claim to fame. In addition to playing a crazy character named Polly on NBC's Las Vegas, starring James Caan and Josh Dumel and Vanessa Marcel for four seasons. I played a wacky spa manager, manicurist, bikini waxer, massage therapist, and that was a lot of fun. I got to be the comedic relief. It was an incredible experience. And those two things are so uh, dichotomous because on House Hunters I'm very girl next door, friendly, clean cut, and on NBC's Las Vegas I am completely crazy and outrageous and I play a, an immigrant character who uh, is from Korea and she is overtly sexual and completely inappropriate. In one of my scenes um, I was accused by overcharging some woman for her bikini wax and I said no no overcharge you see her before she hairy like a man okay I have to go all the way around corner clean basement I lift up strip look like jungle <laughs> That was my character in Las Vegas. <laughs> so there's people that come and see me do stand-up comedy. I do a crazy character named Sung Hee Park who's fresh off the boat from Korea and has never done stand-up before. And it's really outrageous and satirical and politically incorrect. And so people who are fans of mine from House Hunters find out that I do stand-up comedy and they come and see me do stand-up. And they're in the comedy club like this. <laughs> She's not expecting it at what all. What happened to that Suzanne? She was so nice. She was so nice on that other show. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> Is she on drugs? <laughs> <laughs> but I've been a, an actor for almost 30 years. I've been a television host for about 20 years. I've been a stand-up comedian for about 15 years. I'm a writer and a political activist and a teacher and a coach and a minister. I give funny, irreverent guest sermons. So I do a lot of different things. What would you say is your favorite genre that you do? Um, I don't think I can nail it down. It's sort of like asking me, what's your favorite movie of all time? I, that's an impossible question for me because I love movies. So, or like asking if you have 20 children, which is your favorite child? <laughs> <laughs> so it just depends just that on, way. yeah, it just depends on, on what mood I'm in. There's different things that I love about different aspects of expressing my soul. So I don't think that there is one particular thing that I enjoy the most. Uh, although I do think that I was put on the planet to have life experiences, learn from them, and then talk about them. I think I was put on the planet to to try new things. To talk and have adventures and learn lessons and then tell about them. There's one of my favorite poems is by Mary Oliver and it goes like this. Instructions for living a life. Pay attention. Be astonished. Tell about it. Ooh, I like I just that. love that poem. It's just so simple and beautiful. Sometimes sometimes the little simple things are the, the most important things yes. to experience in life. I, I myself like to try and dive as, as far into life as I possibly can. There's, there's so much to experience. There's so much to yes. ways that you can express yourself. I love the fact that this is called Sarah Goes Everywhere. I have to go everywhere. Yes. Why not? <laughs> I've been to every state in the United States and many countries all over the world. I used to be a field host on a morning show with Tom Bergeron called Fox After Breakfast where I was one of four field hosts, they called us road warriors, and they would send us out all over the United States to do these live human interest segments. And so I've been to every state in the U.S. doing live television, meeting interesting people and learning new things. 
it was just the greatest job ever. How many people do you know that can say, I have been to every state in the U.S.? You know, not that many. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, it's it's been a glorious experience this lifetime already for me. And I'm also a stage four breast cancer survivor and thriver. Yay. In 2011, I was I given six it. months to live. Wow. Uh, and the doctor said, you know, to just... You know, get your affairs in order. And I said, oh no, thank you. And I tell people I made cancer my bitch and fisted it in the ass. There you go. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> yes, that's the minister combined with the potty mouth person right there do for you. Do you think faith has a lot to do with your ability to persevere and actually heal? Absolutely, and I, I wouldn't say faith in any sort of organized religion sense, right. but in the sense that optimism and a positive attitude and determination and perseverance and the belief in miracles being possible. So I don't just now believe in miracles conceptually. I am one. You are. So I'm 54 years young. The best is yet to come. And I feel like... I'm a healthier, happier person after this whole experience than I even was before I got cancer. It's a whole new appreciation. It is, it feels like bonus round. And you know, I, I had to learn a lot of hard lessons. I basically used a combination of Western medicine, Eastern medicine, alternative, holistic medicine, revolutionary things, illegal things. I changed my lifestyle, what I eat, what I drink, what I think. I started meditating, I started getting acupuncture, I had to slow down more, I had to stay still, I had to be vulnerable and throw my pride and ego out the window, ask for help and love and receive it. Up until this point in my life, um, I had thought of myself as a, I can do anything, I do it all myself, I'm a superhero. In fact, I save and fix and rescue and help everyone around me, and I don't need any help. And. That's just no way to live. I eventually reached a point where I was slammed to the ground and I had two choices. I could either uh, suffer in solitude and silence or I could come out of the cancer closet and let people know that I actually needed help for the first time. And it was a real lesson in receiving. And so if I decide that I am not done living this life yet, then I can manifest any sort of miracle that I want with a positive attitude and with complete faith and with taking actions that resonate with my mind, body, and spirit. I really think it should be illegal for a doctor to tell you exactly how long you have to live because you don't know my mind, you don't know my soul, you don't know what I was put on the planet to do. Wow. I know, right? You are, you are the living miracle. And I used a combination of different modalities of medicine, but mainly what I had to do, every woman I know who has or had breast cancer has spent her whole life saving and fixing and rescuing everyone but themselves and putting themselves last on the list and not taking care of themselves. And breasts are about nurturing. So breast cancer is about learning to self-nurture. And so I really had to learn to slow down, stay still, ask for help and love and receive it, and I had to crack my heart open. I had kept it a secret for the first five years because in Asian culture it's considered really low class to talk about your problems. You have to pretend everything's fine. Put a brave face on. Oh no, everything perfect. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, everything fine. <laughs> but it wasn't. I was really sick. And so I decided to finally come out of the cancer closet. I did an NBC News interview and a press release, and I received such a tsunami of love and support from extended family and friends and fans from all over the world who I'd never even met. And it was really my lesson to learn, the big life lesson was to ask for and receive help. We are only as sick as our secrets. I had to stop keeping it a toxic secret. And I was concerned that I didn't want to be a burden to my friends. They came over to my house ecstatic to reciprocate. They said, finally, we get to reciprocate. You've been jipping us out of half a friendship when we're not doing well. We tell you and you rush in and love us back to life. When you're not doing well, you don't tell anybody. We don't get to rush in and love you back to life. It's about time. You've been jipping us. We are ecstatic to do this. And I thought, wow, I never thought about it that way before. So I was quite literally loved 
back to life by my family, friends, and fans. Aww. And that's what I had to, I had to learn how to just open up and let in receiving. That's absolutely beautiful. And thank you for sharing that with me. That's Pleasure. inspirational. Yeah. <laughs> I don't just believe in miracles. I am one. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, tell me a little bit about what got you into doing what you do. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, I, uh, I was told that it was important to just get straight A's in school. So I just got straight A's in high school. I was valedictorian. I went to Yale undergrad and studied psychology. I went to Brown for my master's in cognitive psychology. I was going to be a professor. In the Korean handbook, you can be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, or professor. That's basically it. <laughs> You're not supposed to do anything else. And I was on the track to being a professor, but it just wasn't feeling right to me. So I took a leave of absence from my PhD program after I got my master's and I moved to Boston and I fell into acting. I did extra work on a TV series called Spencer for Hire, which was a cop drama based in Boston. And this man on the set, while I was doing extra work, comes over to me and he was a character actor named Arnie Cox. And he still lives in Florida and you know, he's just, he became my guardian angel. He took me under his wing and he introduced himself and he just showed me the ropes of what I should do. And within one month, I was in Screen Actors Guild. I had quit my job, my day job, and I was making a living as an actor in Boston because he just knew that there was an open market for me. There were not very many Asian women in Boston who were acting. And so I, I started this career seemingly by accident, but I don't believe there are any such things as accidents. I was always meant to do this. And you're able to express yourself now. Yes. In, in multi different ways, yes. whether it's comedy, or acting, or hosting, or writing. And one of my great joys in life is to teach. So I really love helping other people find their voice and express their soul. I really do have this belief that if everyone had a creative expression for their deepest parts of their souls, we would have no war because people would have the inner peace that gets out pictured as the global experience. Mm. And so one of my favorite things to do is I teach a class called The Playing Field. It's an ongoing workshop for artists of any type. So I have students who are actors, singers, writers, dancers, comedians, TV hosts. You could be a lawyer, you could be a realtor, anybody who gets up in front of people and speaks and wants to do it at a higher level. And one of my favorite poems is by Rumi. And the poem goes like this, out beyond all ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field, I'll meet you there. And so the class is not about, you did that scene right or you sang that song wrong. It's not about right and wrong. It's no value judgment of good or bad. It's just me encouraging whatever your soul wants to express and I will help fan the flames of whatever embers you bring and we turn it into this beautiful, fire that expresses your soul and so it doesn't matter what you want to express but I'm sort of or the midwife that's mm -hmm. helping you push okay breathe yes let's let's help you find your voice because just like that Marianne Williamson quote you were put on the planet to express your light and you don't do the world any favors by dimming your light so that other people won't feel insecure or jealous you were put on the planet to shine the lighting of a candle does not extinguish another candle. And so it's one of my great passions to help people express themselves and find their creative voice in whatever way it wants to come out. Ooh, I love it. That's inspirational. And I, I try to do that a lot with what I do in my in all avenues of my life is to try and inspire people. It's, it's a big part of my process right now. And, and, and opening up that throat chakra and, yes. I, and just letting it all out. It's so important. And I love the concept for this show. Sarah goes everywhere. everywhere. And I, I try love so many people. new things. Right. Have a big appetite for life. I never understand people who say, I'm just so bored. I just sat on my couch all day. And I'm thinking, are what you are you bored? talking about? I've never <laughs> been bored. There's not enough minutes or hours in the day for me to take in all of life's joys and all of life's lessons and every sensory experience I can have in traveling and and daring to do something frightening and you know I've something been new. I've been skydiving hang gliding bungee jumping parasailing rock climbing scuba diving stand-up comedy I'm an adrenaline junkie I just wanted to live life to the fullest because otherwise what are you what are you here what are you here for what are you doing what are you doing, what are you doing?
doing? <laughs> Come here and claim, claim the most you can because in the big scheme of things, a human life is... It goes by so quick. Right. It's precious. So make the most of it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Suzanne. I appreciate your time, your energy, your warmth, your radiant and inspirational. Thank you. And I think we're good. Yay! <laughs> and I wish you the best of luck with all of this. Thank you. Sarah, going so everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, um, we're about out of time in my imaginary my imaginary time. That's, <laughs> that was so have fast. Have you seen that? Have you seen that? It Your imaginary. Fire. Have you seen there's a watch that just says now? now on I have. It. I have. Love it. I love it too. What it's time is it? It's now. It's now. Right here. Right now. That's all we got. <laughs> I appreciate you coming out and sharing your, your knowledge, your experience, your and I can't wait to see what's next to come for you. Yay! Yay. <laughs> I'm Sarah, and we are out. I can see your inner beauty. I can shape up.